Let's talk about instruction addresses. I'm going to come here and say move into EAX, the value 1, and control L, control V, 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 and I'm going to do 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. What am I, why am I doing this? Just because, pay attention. <laughs> F11. I start the debugger, control Alt D, uh, F11 into this call instruction, which will take us to our do it location inside of our assembly code over here. So let me, um, F11, you see here, here is the disassembled assembly. Now, through all these videos, I have been ignoring these numbers over here. But now it's time for us to talk about what those numbers mean. These numbers are the literal addresses in memory of <coughs> these instructions. Okay, when you write code, it just can't magically be executed. The computer actually has to load that code into memory somewhere. And each instruction gets its own memory address, and the debugger here is showing us the location of each instruction's address. And you can see that, yes, they are very sequential. You see it goes 1, 0, and then the move instruction for the next one takes a 1, 5, and then there's another 5, and there's another 5, and another 5, and so on and so forth. So the move instruction takes up five bytes in RAM, and so on and so forth. Well, how does the computer keep track of where we're at? Right? Have you thought about that? Or maybe you noticed that in previous videos. How does the computer keep track of which instruction we are currently on? I've told you in videos prior to this that the yellow marker indicates the next instruction to execute. It doesn't point at the instruction that has executed, it points at the next instruction that will execute. Well, where does the computer keep track of that? It keeps track of that in the instruction pointer. That's what the EIP means. Uh, e is extended, meaning 32 bits. IP means instruction pointer. And you can see that the instruction pointer, maybe you've noticed this in previous videos, but as I've debugged and pressed F11 and stepped through our code, the instruction pointer is constantly changing. And the reason why it's constantly changing is because we run an instruction and we move to the next one, and then we run that instruction, and then we move to the next one, and we run that instruction, and we move to the next one, and so on and so forth. So right now the next instruction to execute is I'm going to ignore all of these numbers up here and just say it's 1 0. Notice we have 1 0 here. I'll hit to F11 that brings us down to 1 5 and so the next instruction to execute is 1 5 and then uh, we'll execute that hit F11. Now the next instruction to run is 1 A and now we're going to 1 A. And So you can see this instruction pointer is keeping track of where we are at while we execute our code. Alright. Anyway there you go. There's the instruction pointer. That is, we're all, we also talked about uh, code and how it's addressed in RAM. Some instructions are bigger than others, so they won't necessarily always be spaced out by five bytes. It depends on the instruction. Um, and we'll talk about it in a future, future video. But for now, I'm going to show you how to uh, modify the instruction pointer. All right, but we'll do that in the next video.